We are history. A history of rising during crisis. A history that prevails despite the pressure. A thing more than a 19 year old is going to Tokyo. Sometimes life requires you to take a stand. We are working to restore relationships so that families can be strengthened. Sometimes freedom rings after the fight. Kids that I train, I seen some of them go to college. I reach as many as I can reach. Sometimes power requires a little push. For all of the things we serve, they're the walking epitome of a vision. From the past to the present, our stories live on. It's history that proves breaking barriers matters. This is Celebrating Black History. NBC 10 presents Celebrating Black History, supported by TD Bank. Good evening, I'm Jacqueline London. This is Celebrating Black History. Tonight, NBC 10 is honoring the heroes who are making a difference right here in our community. Black leaders like Dr. Ayla Stanford helped the city of Philadelphia tremendously through the pandemic. Trenton's own Athing Mo smoked the competition at the Summer Olympics. And rapper Meek Mill finds a way to leave his mark by consistently giving back to children in need. And then there are local leaders like Malik Jackson, who in the face of violence is seeking peace by using his gym to help keep kids off the street. NBC 10's Aaron Baskerville has his story. Inside this Northern Liberties gym on 2nd Street, a flurry of activity. You can hear the pattern and you can see the pattern. It's the safe haven created by Malik Jackson. Put both your hands up. This night, kids anywhere from 6 to 17 are off the streets. They're learning life lessons from a man who comes from the same neighborhoods as them. I just was like anybody else that made mistakes when they was young. And my environment was much more harsh, so my mistakes were much more, no greater. In just a matter of months, 16 year old Tamir Bryce tells us he feels different, more confident, and it's all because of the guidance of Jackson. Why does it mean something to you to have somebody like him say, stay positive? You don't need the streets. That means so much to me because I ain't never like had nobody to like tell me what they like really been through. Or, like him, they just need the motivation to just do better. Jackson's story is one these kids can learn from. He's lost family members to the streets. He's made mistakes as a South Philly teen. Went to prison for 10 years at the age of 16, including solitary confinement for three years. The look of determination on their faces is what drives his commitment to his gym. Yeah, good job. The kids that I train, I seen some of them go to college. I seen some of them, I see most of them lose their lives. And I visit, I visit their parents and I attended some of the infernals. It's a sad sight to see. Your right foot take you to the right side. His work has grabbed the attention of other anti-violence organizations like NOMO, which stands for new options, more opportunities. Don't get in the mindset that she just got ah. The foundation's kids started coming here last month. Malik's what I call, we call it NOMO is a real model. Realistically, in real time, you can relate to. You know what I mean? And someone you get to see every day and watch them develop. So, you know, they got, a, they got a good admiration and respect for them. So that's a great thing. These kids really need someone that they can look up to and they respect at the same time. So as kids learn the basics of boxing, they're also finding out more about themselves. Just like that. And Jackson will be by their side every step of the way. I reach as many as I can reach. And when they show back up, I always welcome them. Hey, she is good. Hey, the grind good. continues, and so does the love inside this small Philly gym. Aaron Baskerville, NBC 10 News. Mm, a loving space, giving kids the support they need and crave. And it often takes a village. Raising a child can be extremely difficult, especially if you're a single parent. Dr. Crystal Edwards knows this all too well. That's why she started a nonprofit called Empowering Single Moms. Through the program, women are supplied with the necessary tools to not only become financially independent, but to also become the absolute best moms they can be. NBC 10's Rosemary Connors shares her story. 
For Dr. Crystal Edwards, the classroom is like her second home. As the principal of W.D. Kelly School in North Philadelphia, she helps mold the minds of nearly 300 students. Dr. Edwards has been an educator for 23 years. My career is legal. It can go to happy hour <laughs> by itself. <laughs> Over 21. Humor may be one of her best known qualities, but Dr. Edwards is on a serious mission. In addition to her duties at school, she is the founder of the nonprofit called Empowering Single Moms. You see what happens when families break down. I see what happens when families break down, and I see what happens when families are restored. While her work in education helped inspire the nonprofit, it was her own experience that truly led to its creation. I was a divorced mother who became a single mother. Dr. Edwards had four children when she decided to start the nonprofit and help others like her navigate the ups and downs. The nonprofit provides education services, job training, and other support for women to be self-sufficient. We have young mothers. We have mothers who never were on any type of government assistance who found themselves on the system the system and now are really working hard and need those steps in order to alleviate that. Women that we work with have a fire to be free of all of that. She tells me one of the goals of the nonprofit is to stop stereotypes. We have a sexism because it's women, it's women. We have classism, we have a racism that feeds into stereotypes about single mothers. Even though her children are grown up and she's remarried, Dr. Edwards believes her work is important now more than ever. Why do you still do this work today? There's always a single mother who doesn't quite have all the pieces but needs someone to guide her. Mm. Wow. Mouse. Sharnice Lawrence is a special education support assistant at the elementary school. She's a single mother to five-year-old Kenzie who's in pre-K. Sharnice sought out Dr. Edwards' help when she learned about the nonprofit. When you're doing it by yourself, you're like, I can't keep up with this and I can't keep up with this. But when you think of the mindset that she puts you in, you can do it. Motivated by Dr. Edwards, Sharnice started her own small business called Kenzie & Co., named for her daughter, which sells customized party favors. Sharnice is also just eight classes away from her undergraduate degree and teaching certification. We are working to restore relationships so that families can be strengthened. In North Philadelphia, I'm Rosemary Connors, NBC10 News. And women of color have played a key role in so many arenas, including the United States military. But in most cases, their courage has gone unnoticed. However, Lieutenant Sandra Williams Ortega defied those odds by becoming the first female line officer of color in the U.S. Air Force. NBC 10's Johnny Archer has her story. After skipping grades at 16 years old, Williams attended Morgan State University a historically black university in Baltimore. While there, America was changing. Williams was the only woman to be recruited from Morgan State University, and the road ahead will be filled with many more challenges. My job, I knew, was to make them know, the Air Force, that I was human, that black women were human. Be with them so they could get to know me so the system, you know, would open the doors of integration, that was my job. Racism was prevalent, but that didn't stop Williams. In fact, she says it encouraged her. A new door opened in 1958 when Williams became the first line officer in the United States Air Force. People stopped and stared. I knew, you know when you are I mean, when somebody's looking at you, when somebody's asking to touch your skin, you know that, boy, something, I mean, I'm, something is different here. My job, what do I do? I knew that I was an instrument. I mean, I wasn't just an ordinary officer. I had a job. I was, I had to figure it out. I had to, whatever the moment called for, I had to try to figure out how to, you know, how to make it work. She made it work professionally and personally. It was in the Air Force where she was introduced to Airman Julio Ortega. The two married just three months after meeting, 
And more than 60 years later, they're still happily married in Marlton, New Jersey. Williams retired from the Air Force in 1962 as a first lieutenant when she became pregnant with the first of her four kids. I learned from sitting there and being in the position that I got into uh, when I was here that I am my own power. Never again will they name me. I name myself. They will not take power from me. I empower myself. Powerful voice from a powerful woman who opened doors for generations of black women to come. Johnny Archer, NBC 10 News. What if I told you a major piece of MLB history lives right here in Philadelphia? Norma is special because he truly loves the game. I love everything about baseball. Next, a celebration of sports and how this baseball scout is changing players' lives one pitch at a time. NBC 10 presents Celebrating Black History. TD Bank supports people and opportunities that help further inspire, amplify, and elevate black communities. Student first, athlete second. We cannot mess up this equation. The equation is simple for Chester head football coach LaDante Bell. I've been entrusted for a parent to say, hey, you know, I have my, my son in your hands for these next two hours. Truly, that means a lot. LaDante's love is not just of the game. It's born from tragedy. It was devastating to me to lose a player, and not just one, but three. That's why he shares meals and provides transportation for his athletes. Dedication that earned him the highest distinction from the Eagles as one of just 30 nominees for the Don Shula National High School Coach of the Year. African Americans have made a tremendous impact on sports. That includes Wilmer Reed. Reed is the oldest living scout for Major League Baseball, and he's doing it right here for our hometown team. Danny Pomels has more. Wilmer is special because he truly loves the game and he loves the people that participate in the game. Hey, John. That's How you doing, man? Good, good. Pretty good. The game of baseball has been pretty good to Will Marie. In fact, it's one of the loves of his life. What do you love about baseball? I love everything about baseball. At 86 years young, this Southwest Philly native remains a Philly scout. On this day, Wilmer and fellow Major League Scouts have flocked to Philadelphia for the Mid-Atlantic Scout Day, a chance for players who aren't household names to impress scouts like Wilmer. What makes you still want to pursue finding that diamond in the rough? Like you wake up every day thinking about that or? I do, that's, that's the only thing on my mind. Eat, sleep, and, and work baseball, that's it. Wilmer's baseball career began in a much different time as a pitcher in the Negro Leagues with the Indianapolis Clowns. The conditions weren't very good. Well, we went to places that we weren't allowed to go to, color fountains and the colored bathrooms and different things of that nature. Wilmer pitched against Satchel Paige and played in the time of Hank Aaron. Baseball legends providing this Philadelphia legend insight that's unmatched. You can hear about players, you can read about them, but he's actually seen a lot of these players play and listening to his stories is, is truly invaluable. He'll show up to a baseball game in a North Philly ball field that may not look like this. He'll still have the aura. He'll still have the hat, the leather shoes, and his professionalism will never lower because it's an inner city baseball game. That look is iconic, unique to this baseball treasure. You think about a scout, he has a nice hat, has, a, has the radar gun, and he just has the eye. He's definitely a lifer. 
some guys joke that, that they've never seen you without the hat. That the hat has always been there as long as they've known you. Tell them to follow me home there, I take my hat off. <laughs> And it's at home where Wilmer shared with us pictures of the other love of his life, his late wife, Osceola. I was married for 63 years. Wow. So, and that's how I met her at a baseball game. No kidding. In Sharon Hill. <laughs> she knew more about baseball than I did. No kidding. Yes. And I had a very, very good marriage and a great family. A love that produced eight children, a love born around the game Wilmer holds so dear. Baseball is my life. Take what you need, leave what you don't. That's the motto of the local community fridge project. NBC10 is celebrating the woman behind the mission that's helping feed our neighbors in need. If you've walked around Philadelphia lately, you may have noticed bright yellow refrigerators on the sidewalks. They are filled with free, fresh produce and water. It's a Philadelphia woman's way of helping one neighbor at a time. NBC 10's Anya Lachelle has her story. Take what you need, leave what you don't. The fridges are open 24-7. Dr. Michelle Nelson spent more than 15 years as an elementary school teacher, but she realized her passion for making a difference extended beyond the classroom. One in five Philadelphians still suffers from some level of food insecurity, so I felt it was important that if you can help and you can do something, you should get involved in any way that you can. So she launched Mama T's Community Fridge Project in July 2020. We started with one community fridge, at 7th and Girard, and now we have 18 Mama T community refrigerators helping to support our neighbors in Philly. And they've since fed more than 170,000 people, sourcing food from local farms and restaurants and working with major partners like Whole Foods. So how often do you restock the fridge in the pantry? We stock the fridges weekly, okay. uh, multiple times a week. So we ask for fresh fruits and vegetables first. We also accept pantry items, so dry goods that are properly packaged, that have non-expired dates. There's more stuff in here than my fridge. This is, <laughs> this is awesome. And it's an effort that truly takes a village. We have um, neighborhood volunteers that are uh, young kids. Um, we have um, older um, senior citizens that help out. So it's really a community effort. Once I started seeing that there were these fridges all over the city, I thought about how much our neighborhood could use it. Shelly Walker owns Fairmount Bicycles. She reached out to Mama T's last April about hosting a fridge outside of her shop at Fairmount in North Capitol Street. I feel like the neighborhood has responded in such positive ways. Like people get excited about getting food. People get excited about giving food. Thank you so much, Michelle, for all that you're doing. I'm liking your post right now, right? Last November, Dr. Nelson was featured on the Kelly Clarkson show after receiving the People Magazine's Kindness Award for her fridge project. Kelly is amazing and it was really wonderful being with her. She also released a book, Neighbors Helping Neighbors, to teach children the importance of volunteering. I wanted to have a book that speaks from their perspective on what it's like to help your neighbors. You're not too big, you're not too small, you're not too young, you're not too old to help and understand what it means when someone does not have food. Dr. Nelson, this is incredible. If only the world could have a neighbor like you. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm thankful for the neighbors in Philly. It's an act of love every day because you never know when you're gonna get a message from someone who is very appreciative that the fridge is there. Did you know Harriet Tubman would have celebrated her 200th birthday this year? And Philadelphia is taking time to celebrate this pioneer. This nine foot tall sculpture outside City Hall is said to personify her strength. The city calls it a symbol of hope. It beautifully illustrates her determination despite the intense opposition she faced opposition greater than a little cold weather. The sculpture will stand through the end of March. Remember the legacy and work of the pioneers that pushed the world forward. 
And thank you for taking the time to celebrate black history. I'm Jacqueline London from all of us here at NBC 10. Thank you for watching.